Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought I'd show you how I made this little card using this cute little stamp from my favorite things and we're going to be using some of their dies as well. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you this card in a similar version with some different colors. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off by using the My Favorite Things, this little girl here. And we'll be using that saying, we make a great team, from the Happy Together set. And the matching die as well. And then from a Tweet Hello, we're going to use that butterfly, those three little flowers, and the single flower and also the matching dies. And we're going to be using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock to do all of our stamping. So I'm putting some cardstock in my Misty and I'm going to uh, take that little girl and I'm just going to ink her up and I'm using the ink from my favorite things, the Extreme Black ink. And I really like this. It's a jet super jet black ink and it usually stamps really well the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that and now I'm going to stamp those other three images. I'm just placing them on this little block because I'm going to need quite a few of these. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp those. And so we're going to end up with three butterflies, four of the bigger flower, two of the little trio of flowers, and the little girl. And now I'm going to go ahead and place the coordinating dies on each of these. And I'm using some purple tape just to hold them in place. I did cut them down a little bit smaller so that they would fit into my Tim Holtz Sizzix Sidekick machine. So that makes it easier for me just to run these through quickly in this little machine. And you can see I can get quite a few on one little plate here. So I'm going to run all of those through. And now I have everything die cut. So I'm going to start off coloring the little girl here. I'm using 623 and the blender pen N00. And I'm, this is kind of a lavender color. And I'm just going to speed up the coloring here so that you can see, see it pretty quickly. But it's pretty basic. I'm laying down the light lavender first. And then with the blender pen, I'm coming in and I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. Now, I'm not going to add a second color of lavender. I'm just going to darken it up with that same color. So I'm adding a little bit more of that color and blending it out some more. So I'm going to continue to do that here down along the bottom edge. And I'm just going to blend that out. I didn't want it to get too dark. So now I'm taking 723, which is kind of a hot pink color, and I'm just cleaning off my blender pen and coming in with that and blending that color in. And these Tombow markers are a water-based marker, and it's a dual tip marker. So you have a brush tip on one end and a bullet tip on the other end. So now I'm just coloring in those three little flowers and the little heart in her hair there. And I'm taking 723 and 800, which is a light pale pink and a darker pink. And I'm doing all around her face in the lighter pink. And then just darkening her cheeks a little bit with the darker one. And now I'm going to blend those together. And this blender pen blends very easily. It's not as wet as a water brush, but you certainly could use a water brush. So now I'm taking 993 and 991. So this is a light yellow and a little bit of a darker uh, yellow color. But I changed my mind here and I decided to use 912, which is more of a tannish brown color, just to give a little bit more depth to her hair. And now I'm going to blend those two together. And I'm leaving a little highlight there at the top of her hair. And now with that same 991, I'm going to color in that little chick. And with 993, I'm going to color the little beak, which is kind of an orangey, bright orangey yellow color. Now with 723, I'm going to make a little pink on the cheek of that little bird there. With 723 and 800, which is kind of a flesh tone and a lighter pink color, 
I'm just adding a little bit of that color to her arms and her legs and blending that out. I'm going to come back in with a little bit more. I thought it was a little too light and darken it down the bottom edge of her legs there. Now with N75 and N65, which is a light gray and a little bit darker gray, I'm just going to add a little bit of color to her shoes here. Just cleaning off my pen in between colors and blending that out. And now you can see how cute she looks. And so now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, the white gel pen here. I'm using the Jelly Roll pen, and I'm just going to make some little polka dots on her dress. And if you feel like they get a little too light, you can always come back in and add another layer of white. Go over it one more time. Sometimes I do that because it does get faded out a little bit. So with 623, 725, and 991, I'm going to go ahead and color in these three butterflies. So I'm laying down the yellow, then the lavender, and then the pink. And with the blender pen, I'm going to come in and gently blend those together. Just cleaning off my pen again and blending those out. Then I did decide to come back in with another layer of color. Again, not changing colors, just going back to those colors with the yellow and the lavender and adding a little bit more color. I just thought it got a little too light. So now I'm going to come in with the uh, Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen. And I don't know if you can see that there, but it's a crystal clear sparkle pen. And this will add a lot of glitter, kind of a glittery effect to these butterflies. And then I'll show you that up close here. And you can see, you'll be able to see that it gives a beautiful sparkly effect to those butterflies. So I'm going to finish coloring the rest of those and set those aside and let those dry for now. Now for these four larger flowers, I'm not going to do much. I'm taking this N75, which is a really light gray, just adding a little gray around the centers there and blending it out. Really not, you can't even see it on camera, so I'm not spending a lot of time here. Now the Nouveau Crystal Drops in the Bubblegum Blush, I'm going to add that to the center of each of these flowers. But by adding that gray, it just gives a little shadow and makes them look white, but with a little bit more realistic effect to them. So now I'll bring that up close here so you can see the dimension that the, the Nouveau Drops add. Now that those butterflies are dry, I'm going to go back to my Jelly Roll white gel pen and add a little bit of white here to the bottom of the butterfly and a little dot on the wings. And that just adds a little bit more of that white to these. And I'm going to do the same thing for those three little flowers that she had. You can see that adds a lot there. So now I'm going to use the uh, frame die from Dynamics. And this is called the Stitched Rectangle Scallop Frame. And this is the largest one. And I'm going to just place that on my Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then I'm going to grab these border dies. I'm going to grab these two here. It, it's a stitched scallop border. And this is the stitched scallop border basic edges number two. And I will give you the information for all of this down at the bottom. And then I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock five and a quarter by four. And I'm going to position these two borders on there. And I'm placing this one about an inch and a half up from the bottom. And then I'm going to place this one, the left side of it, about an inch and a half up from the bottom. And then the right hand side will dip down a little bit, maybe about halfway. So now I also want to take this tree die set from Tremendous. I'm sorry, it's called the Tremendous die set. And you can see the cute little trees that it makes. And you have all different little toppers you can put on it. But I'm going to use this little scallopy one, and I'm going to be using it as a cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut that also out of the Bristol Smooth. And then I'm going to take this uh, 
garden gate die, and I'm going to die cut two of these. And I'm going to be die cutting these out of a heavy 100 pound black cardstock. And I'm just taping everything down with the purple tape. So now I'm going to go ahead and run all of those through the machine. This is the Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. And you can see that beautiful stitched scalloped border. And now I'm going to do the same thing for these borders. And this is a matching scallop to that frame, which I think is really nice that everything matches up. And then this is the cloud. And the reason I chose this is because I think it mimics that scallopy edge that we have on the other two pieces there. And now for the uh, garden gate, I've got two of these die cut. And you can see that that frame, again, this is five and a quarter by four inches. That's going to fit right behind that frame. And I'm going to take the distressed oxide in the tattered rose and the worn lipstick. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm trying to determine here where I need that color to start. So that bottom border is going to be covered. So I need to start about an inch and a half up from the bottom of this panel. And I'm just going to apply this ink all over the bottom here. Just to double checking to make sure I have it in the right area. And then I'm going to add the lighter color across the top. Just trying to blend those two together. Now I thought it looked like a little bit too straight of a line so I'm adding some color in here just to give it a little bit more of a random look and then I'm blending those two out and that looks pretty good there. So now I have to do the same thing for the front frame and I'm going to add the darker pink here and then the lighter and blend the two together just like I did for that inside panel. So now you can see those two will match up perfectly. So now I'm grabbing the, the Distress Sprayer from Tim Holtz, and this just has water in it, and I'm going to spritz all over those two little panels there. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and blot up the excess water. And this is going to give a beautiful kind of splattered effect, which just adds a lot of texture and a lot of dimension. And now for these two little borders, I'm going to use the Hickory Smoke and the Black Soot from the Distress Oxides. And I'm going to start with a lighter gray here. And I'm going to just kind of randomly place this along the edges and across the top. I don't want to completely cover this panel. I do want to leave a little bit of the white in there just as kind of like a highlight. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come in with the black soot and I'm just going to kind of add that again just kind of in a few different areas here just to add a little bit more dimension and then I'm blending those two out so you can see that leaves a little bit of a white area there and I'm going to do the same exact thing for this little hilly border so now for this little cloud I'm going back to the hickory smoke and I'm just bringing a little color in all around the edges of that and then I'm going to cut this, not quite in half. One piece is a little bit bigger than the other, and those are going to be my two little clouds. Now for this fence, I didn't need all of it. So I'm going to snip off this little scallopy edge on both sides. And I'm going to snip off the bottom section of the fence, just going up to that little edge there. And I'm going to do the same thing for this other one. And those two are going to line up. So I'm going to take some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive and I'm going to go ahead and place that all down that, that end panel there. And I'm going to glue those two together. This will just lengthen this fence so that it will fit across the entire length of my card. So now I'm grabbing some clear acetate. This is the Judykins clear acetate panel and it's already cut to an A2 size card 
And I'm going to go ahead and add some of that Nouveau adhesive all along the back of this panel. And then I'm going to place it about a quarter of an inch up on that acetate sheet. And I don't know if you can see the acetate there, but that's what I'm placing it on. And so now I'm going to snip off the ends there. And then that's going to sit behind that frame. And the reason I did this, and, and so I'm taking the 1 8 inch score tape to attach this frame to that acetate panel. And the reason I placed the fencing on the acetate is because I wanted it to stand up a little bit. And it's so very thin, I thought it would be too hard to layer a bunch of those together. So by placing it on this acetate, I can pop it up a little bit and give it some dimension. And you'll see that here in a minute. So I'm going to take that panel and lay it right on the back of that frame. And you can see that it hangs over a little bit, and I will cut that away. So now I have that acetate behind the frame, and now I'm going to place this border on the front of that framed panel. I'm placing plenty of adhesive on there. And I'm going to peel away the backing. I'm just trimming off that little bit of excess. And now I'm going to place that right on the front there. So now I want to pop up this panel. And I'm going to take the double-sided adhesive strips. These are from Darius, and these are the adhesive foam strips. These are really nice. They're already cut to a 1 8 inch size, and they will fit perfectly behind this frame. So I've placed them all around the edges of the frame, and here I just wanted to show you that they're very pliable, so they kind of go around curves very nicely. And it makes it a lot easier than cutting your... Um, your scotch foam tape to size. So here I'm just placing some glue on the back of this border and I'm going to get that in place. And then I want to get these little clouds glued down so I'm just going to put that larger one down first and then I'm going to place the smaller piece up in front of that one. And I think these made cute little clouds. So if you don't have certain things in your collection, just look for what you do have and try to make it work for you. Now here, this little girl, I thought I would pop her up. So I'm just going to place some scotch foam tape right along the back there. And I'm going to position her down towards the bottom left-hand corner of this panel here. I wanted enough of that fence to show, so I placed her down just a little bit. And then I'm going to place these flowers kind of as though she's sitting in a little bed of flowers here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of foam mounting tape along the edge there just so that it will sit right up alongside of her. And I'm going to do the same thing for this larger flower here. And now with those two, a couple of those larger flowers. I'm going to place two over here towards the right hand side of my border. And I'm just placing the glue down, just a couple little dots of glue here. And then I wanted a third one to be kind of behind there. So I'm putting some glue on it and I'm going to position it in behind that acetate panel there. And that just gives it a little more dimension. And then I also wanted to place that little trio of flowers in the background as well. So just putting a little glue down and putting those into place. So now for the butterflies, I'm just going to bend the wings just a little bit. So I'm just kind of pressing down in the center and folding them up. And I want one behind that panel and two of them in front. And we're just trying to decide 
where I want those to be. And now I'm just going to glue those three down. So now I have all three of those glued into place. Now I can remove that backing from the foam adhesive strips and line that up and position it in place there. So now I was looking at it and I decided I wanted to put a saying on it. And although I had already put all the layers together, if I remove my the foam mat from my Misty Stamp Positioner, um, I can get this card to set right down in there in that Misty Positioner, right in, kind of sit down lower in that panel there. Kind of mimicking as if I was using a thicker uh, stamp. And I'm going to take that We Make a Great Team, and you can see all the other cute little sayings on this stamp set. And I put a little adhesive down just to kind of hold this in place while I stamp it because the magnets obviously wouldn't work here because I've got too many layers. So I inked that up with the uh, black ink and stamped it. And you can see that it stamped perfectly fine. So if you ever have that situation where you have all the layers on, just remove that foam pad from your Misty and you should be all set to stamp something that's dimensional. Now I just position that in place and you can see all the dimension we have here. The beautiful frame and the butterflies and I just think she's just so cute. So that's that one is all set. I wanted to show you that I use the same design to make these other two cards and here I used the full tree as a tree and I did uh, change the colors out and made a blue sky the other one was yellow and I added the little birds from a tweet hello stamp set and I changed the sentiment to sending you a tweet hello and I will give you all the information for that down below so here's the card we made I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.